Hey, this is His Word Unveiled, and I'm loving this day because we are hitting the Battle of Jericho. Love this. Love this story. Love this message. The truth is so profound. So Joshua chapter 6 is what we are in today. So go do that. We're just jumping into this. So much truth. And after this video, I just want you to let the Holy Spirit just soak this in. Just linger in this chapter for a while. Take as long as you want, as long as you have. Just rest in the Lord. As you read this, just listen to Him. Just um, just let Him stir things up. Be so intentional, as I always say, in every single one of these videos. But it's for real. Like, if we're not doing that, then there's no point in reading. There's no point in and going through anything and being disciplined in anything if we're not being so purposeful if we if we are not focused on simply meeting with the Lord if if that's not what we're after if it's something to benefit ourselves or to make ourselves you know whatever look better or feel better because we're doing the right thing feel safe even if we're doing anything to benefit ourselves then we're missing it then then it means nothing then it's all in vain all of it but if we have that focus and that drive to meet with the Lord, to, to encounter Him, to, to learn something, to grow in Him, to, to discover more of Him, if, if it's about Him, if our focus is Him and eternally minded, just getting to Him, learning more of Him, um, tasting and seeing how good He is, any amount of encounter with the Lord, if that's our purpose, then, then there is so much in that. There's so much meaning. There's so much life in that. And that's when things happen. That's, that's when, when, that's when chains break and that's when things fall. As we're getting ready to read the battle of Jericho when the walls fall, that's when it happens. When we are in the presence of the Lord for one reason, and that is to be in the presence of the Lord, that that's our purpose to settle, to, to be, to be rooted and grounded in who Jesus is, learning and training our minds more and more so that we can experience and encounter and live in and walk out more and more of who he is and what he has to offer. So today, Joshua chapter six, meet with the Lord. Set aside, seriously, set aside some intimate time with the Lord, you and him, and let God move. Joshua chapter six. Let's do this thing together. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the way that you move. I thank you for the power in your presence. I thank you for the truth we have, the hope that we have, that when we find ourselves in your presence, then things happen. That then the junk flees, then things stirs up within us. Um, there's so much movement. Lord, and we know that nothing can stand against you. Nothing can stand in your presence. Father, we love you and we acknowledge the power in your presence. And we pray that through this story, you allow our, our human mind, just the weakness in that, to be opened and awakened to that depth of power, to what you are truly capable of doing, to what you desire to do in us when we are found in you what your presence gives and how it gives and how often it gives to, to the depths of what it gives. Father, thank you for giving. Thank you for being. Thank you for drawing us in to that powerful, purposeful place. Lord, help us. Help us to, to get rid of everything that distracts, everything that hinders, and to find ourselves resting in you. We love you. And we're so, so excited for, for this time with you in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Joshua chapter 6. Okay, so first verse explains so much of what is going on and the perspective of the people, the nations around them, um, specifically in Jericho. So it says, now Jericho was tightly shut because of the sons of Israel. No one went out and no one came in. So again, our last video, the last chapter, we read about how the nations, that that they are hearing about the miracles that the Lord is doing and how he is being their victory and he is allowing them to succeed in everything and defeating their enemies and <clears throat> dispossessing these nations. They're hearing about it and they're feeling the fear. So it says that Jericho is tightly shut. So everything is shut down. No one's leaving. No one's coming in. Um, they're very, very guarded. Their defenses are up. Then the Lord says, this is beautiful in verse 2. The Lord said to Joshua, See, 
I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and its valiant warriors. So the Lord is assuring them, saying, I have given you this city. I give, this is your city. And I love how the Lord chose to speak that right at the beginning. So they could have chosen through this entire story, as you guys read, um, through the whole thing, they could have given up or they could have, you know, stepped back and said, oh, I'm too embarrassed. I'm too afraid. What if this doesn't work? You know, this is so big, whatever it is before any of that, before they even had an opportunity, a chance to allow their flesh and emotions to just mess with them. Before any of that, the Lord comes in and says, I have given you this land. See, I have given this to you. This is your land. That that just screams that when God speaks, we have to listen and we have to stand on that word. We have to stand um, on the promises of the Lord and what he speaks so that that carries us, that drives us into into that, into that purpose, into that blessing, that that's what leads us. That's what drives us before our emotions even, you know, try to creep in. Before anything, we have to make up our mind to believe the Lord. Like, hey, God said he's giving us this land. God said he gave us this land. See, I've given you this land that they could stand on that. <clears throat> okay, so then the Lord just lays out what he wants them to do, that they were to march around the city one time for six days. So they'd wake up, they march around the city one time. Then they go back, go back to sleep, wake up, march around the city. Then they go back and they do that six times. And then on the seventh time, it says in verse four, then on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. So that seventh day then, not only just one time and back, but once, twice, three times, all the way to seven times. So they were instructed of what they were to do. They were to march. They get up, they march, they camp. They get up, they march, they camp. And that seventh day, march around seven times. Now this isn't just a building. This is the city of Jericho that they are to march around. So that seventh day, that was a lot of marching. So the Lord just lays that out right away. This is what you are to do. Then he starts explaining the positioning of how they were to march out. So they were to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And this I love, and this we cannot miss, understanding that the Ark of the Covenant is the symbol of the presence of the Lord. So what the Lord is saying is, hey, you carry my presence. You march around with my presence. And then he shows the positioning. So he says that the priests who blow the seven trumpets that they will go out before the ark. So we have the seven priests, they're blowing trumpets. It's almost this beautiful, um, like, you know, here comes the presence of the Lord. Here it's this, it's this letting people know, this declaration of, hey, here's what's going on. Hey, pay attention, here's big news. Hey, we're ushering in the main, you know, the main thing, the, the best thing. They're going before the Ark of the Covenant, blowing the trumpets, and the presence of God, this Ark of the Covenant that they're marching around with, follows behind these priests who are blowing the trumpets. Then in front of the priests blowing the trumpets, we have the armed men. So they will go out first. They're marching around with the priests behind them blowing the trumpets. Then the Ark of the Covenant and those carrying this Ark around the city with such purpose, with such focus and intention. And then behind the Ark of the Covenant is the rear guard of the armed men. So again, the beauty in this and in the positioning of this call of obedience that is going to give them this land, that's going to dispossess, it's going to defeat and deliver the city of Jericho up to the Israelites, this positioning that the presence of God is in the center of what they're doing. It's in the center of everything going on, in the center of this movement, the center of this obedience, the center of this moment, this life, everything, that the Ark of the Covenant's right there, rear guard behind them, all of these armed men, and then the trumpets in front of the Ark of the Covenant with the, the front um, armed men way up in front. Love this. God just saying, this is where I need to be. The center of it all. The center of your mind, all of your thoughts. I'm the very center. So when I'm the center, then I can explode out, infiltrate myself, my presence in everything, in every single thought. The same in our heart, that God should be in the very center, taking care of everything 
that, that wants to go crazy, that wants to get out of hand, that wants to get dramatic, that wants to get angry, that he's in the center. And if we allow him to stay in the center, that we're choosing to keep him in the center so that he can be Lord over every single emotion, every single thought, every single action, that his presence is to be positioned in the very center. That's powerful. And that is crazy applicable for every single one of us. That's where he is to be. And we need to find ourselves in that center, the center of his presence. That he chooses to dwell in the center of us, we need to find ourselves in the very center of his presence, resting there, remaining there, not trying to do things outside of his presence, but right there. Steady, firm, assured, confident, empowered in his presence resting there. Okay. So that is the whole positioning of this. Then we go to verse 10, but Joshua commanded the people saying, so when they're going to march, he already gave them orders of, Hey, you're going to march. And this is the positioning that you're going to be in. Then he commands the people saying, while they march, this is what they are not to do. He says, you shall not shout nor let your voice be heard, nor let a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I tell you, shout. Then you shall shout. This is huge. This is absolutely huge. This is a call for complete obedience, physically, mentally, um, emotionally. Not only were they to march around the city, like, yes, God said, this is how you're going to march. This is how many times, this is how many days. But not only were they to march around the city, but they were to do so without speaking a single word. They were to march with the right attitudes, the right focus, and the right restraint. That they were to hold back and not say a single word. Like, I mean, just imagine the city. Yes, they were full of fear. It says that they were, they were closed in, they were shut up tightly because these other nations feared the Israelites. But even after a while in that fear, this city closed in tight. When the Israelites start marching around, I can just imagine that the people of Jericho looking out and saying, what are they even doing? They're crazy. And just, just mocking, just laughing, just thinking, what? Ooh, they're marching like so tough. So like, what are they even doing? A bunch of crazy people is what I can imagine them doing. And this command to not let a single word proceed out of their mouths, that the Lord is speaking this for Joshua to command the people that they were to march, they were to be in position, and they were to do so without speaking a single word. That while the city of Jericho were probably mocking, you know, calling, calling things out, laughing, just calling them crazy, whatever it is, that they weren't supposed to... Um, you know, mock back or respond with such pride saying, oh, here we are, you know, God's on us. You're going to be destroyed. They weren't supposed to say a single word. They also weren't supposed to express their fears and, and maybe even their embarrassment. Like, oh my word, these people think we're crazy. We're just marching around. What are we even doing? They were instructed not to say a single word that they were to hold back they were to shut their mouths. They were to just keep silent until that last trumpet blew. That the Lord was saying, look, all I want is to be in or be with you. That his presence was to march around, that they were to stay quiet. Not focus on what they looked like. Not focus on the people in the city. Not focus on who they were around. They were to focus on marching, obeying being with the presence of the Lord, literally marching, doing life with the presence of God, keeping their mouths shut, keeping silent, focused on his presence, focused on what the Lord was calling them to do. They weren't to complain. They weren't to speak of their embarrassment. They weren't to yell back and pridefully mock. None of these things. The Lord, it was very clear their command and not a single word should proceed out of their mouth. They were to stay quiet and march. Um, this is what I put on the side of my Bible. This is what the Lord put in me. Sometimes we need to just shut our mouths and march forward, keeping focused on what we are called to do and who we are called to do it with in the presence of the Lord. We don't need to announce our arrival and that we are called. We don't need to verbally question God or speak our fears out loud. 
Just shut up and march. Focus and walk forward in complete obedience, assured that we are resting in the presence of the Lord. That's what God said. Take the Ark of the Covenant and march. God just wanted to do life with them. And he knows that if we are focused on ourselves and focused on talking, 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 just this vain talk, this just all this stuff that doesn't matter, if we're so focused on other things, even when we go to the Lord, how often do we go to the Lord and we're just running our mouths saying, God, we feel this way. God, we need help with this. Oh God, you're so good. Even in those moments where we're praising the Lord, God is saying, God is bringing us into this invitation where we need to be quiet. We need to learn to just shut up and be in his presence, to just be, to just simply be, to rest, to be still, to be quiet and to listen so he can speak to us. So he can reveal things to us. He can unveil himself to us. Sometimes we miss, we miss some, sometimes so much of who God is, the intimacies of what he's speaking into our lives because we're busy talking. Now, we need to be constantly praising the Lord, constantly lifting him up on high. But there are times when in our praise, in our praise, we just need to be quiet and allow our souls to erupt with praise. Allow that to come out. Allow, allow just us being in him, willing to do life in him, resting, being settled in his presence, that sometimes that is the greatest amount of praise that we can give to the Lord. We have got to understand the power in just being quiet and just being still in the presence of the Lord. Okay, so then in verse 11, it just lays this out. So we had the ark of the Lord taken around the city, circling at once. Then they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. Now Joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. So this again, just explaining that they went out, they marched, they came back, went out, marched, came back. Then verse 16, at the seventh time, when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. So on that seventh time, remember that seventh day they were to get up, circle the city seven times. So this seventh time, remember again, this whole understanding of rest, that's what seven is, that the Lord rested on that seventh day. There's so much power in that, so much stillness and rest in that. And so you think, looking at this from hindsight, you're like, okay, so on the seventh day, God wasn't calling them into rest, he was calling them to do more, to march longer, seven times this time. So why on that seventh day? And how beautiful it is thinking that, okay, on that seventh day, you know, that day of rest, thinking of the power and God calling them out. Again, to not speak, to just be still, to be quiet, to be resting in and with his presence. The Lord was calling them into more intimate time, more intimate moments, a longer period where, hey, continue to still, to still rest. March with the presence of God in the center of what they're doing, the center of who they are. And the Lord invited them to do that more, to do that longer. Hey, seven times this time, because this seventh day, screaming rest, screaming power, which ultimately screams movement, purpose, like purposeful, movement full of purpose and power. That's what that is. For that seventh day, God called them to into this, this positioning, this, these moments of walking with him even longer, spending more time with him, deeper, more intimate time with him, seven times around this city with the presence of God at the center. So then it said at that, at the seventh time then of walking around, the the priest blew the trumpets and he said to shout. Then in verse 17, we see the city shall be under the band, the ban, it and all that is in it belongs to the Lord. We um, jump to verse 18, but as for you, only keep yourselves from the things under the ban so that you do not covet them. So this, this understanding under the ban, this means you know, that which is destroyed, that it's to be completely destroyed. It's, it's set apart to be utterly destroyed. So it said, keep away from the things um, of the ban. It says, do not covet them and take some of the things under the ban and make the camp of Israel cursed and bring trouble on it. So the camp of Israel will be accursed if they 
covet the things under the ban. If they covet the things that are made for destruction. And this, the city of Jericho, it was made for destruction. And the Lord is saying, don't covet these things. When they're destroyed, don't want them for yourselves. Because these were, were made, they were established to be destroyed. They were established to be done with. So if you take those, if you take something that's made to be destroyed, then you will bring this, this curse among the children of Israel. You'll bring these consequences that are not, it's not even close to being worth it. And he warns them, a solid warning of keep themselves away from the things under the ban that, that keep them for, for those things that, that are to be destroyed, leave them destroyed. And you who are made to be blessed, made to be in the presence of God, walking, marching in complete obedience so that you're living in freedom and, and abundant life, then you remain in that. You remain focused on that. And there should be a distinction, something that's set apart from you being set apart to God, to be holy, to and for him, set apart from those things under the ban. So that warning is laid out. Then verse 20. So the people shouted. So we were, um, they were told of what to do, to shout, all this to happen. And then in verse 20, here it is. So the people shouted and the priests blew the trumpets. And when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight ahead, and they took the city. They utterly destroyed everything in the city. Again, that which is under the ban. So I love this, that um, they shouted with a great shout and the wall fell down flat. That's where the power is. Marching, walking forward, being settled in, therefore being moved by the presence of the Lord. That's all they were to do. They were to charge at the city with their swords or, or charge at it and put a bunch of dynamite and blow it up. That's not how they were going to defeat this city. That's not how these walls were going to fall down. It wasn't in their own strength, in their own weapons, in their own attacks. Their attack, their strategy, their victory was being quiet, shutting their mouths, being still, resting themselves, resting their hearts, their minds, doing nothing but walking with the presence of the Lord acknowledging, hey, we are with the presence of the Lord. The trumpets blaring, saying, we have the presence of the Lord with us. Making it aware, making it known by just walking in obedience. They didn't have to announce it verbally. <coughs> All they had to do was walk in obedience, in and with the presence of the Lord. At the very center, running, ruling, leading, reigning in every area. In every area, that's what we're called to do. That's all they did. March around the city with the presence of the Lord. And because the presence of the Lord was there, because they were walking with the presence of the Lord, because they were shutting their mouths and focusing on what mattered, on just being obedient, on just being in the Lord, in his presence, because of that, the walls fell flat. Because nothing can stand in the presence of the Lord. Nothing. When we choose to be in the presence of the Lord, when we're covered with the presence of the Lord, when we're standing on it, when it's above us, before us, beside us, wrapping us up, when we are in the presence of the Lord, nothing can come against us. Nothing can stand because nothing can stand against the presence of the Lord. Nothing. And when the presence of the Lord is present, then things fall. Walls will fall. Chains will break. Addictions will crumble. Those things will happen because there is power in the presence of the Lord. And that's the, just the truth. That is the powerful, life-changing truth. That no, no one can be free outside the presence of the Lord because freedom happens in the presence of the Lord. Movement happens in the presence of the Lord. Things happen. Things, incredible things happen in the presence of the Lord. That's where that power is at. And because the presence of the Lord was with them in the center of what they were doing and who they were, being their identity, wrapping up everything they were doing in the moment. There was, there was no talking. There was no strategizing. There was no fighting. There was marching in the presence of the Lord, with the presence of the Lord. That's all it took. And those walls fell down because of his presence. 
Then we see at the end, um, Joshua commands the two men who spied on the land to go and rescue Rahab, to go into that, into her home where the scarlet thread was hanging, where he said that she needed to remain there underneath the scarlet thread to remain in the house with her household and she would be spared. And we see that in them going to get Rahab. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Then this finishes up um, in verse 26. Then Joshua made them take an oath at that time saying, Cursed before the Lord is the man who rises up and builds the city Jericho. With the loss of his firstborn, he shall lay its foundation. And with the loss of his youngest son, he shall set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was in all the land. So again, this curse is taking this oath and, and Jericho being under the ban. The things in Jericho were under the ban that it was made to be destroyed that the people would be dispossessed, that the land would be the children of Israel's, that God said, see, I have given you this land. That's how God works. And when we are willing to be found resting in the presence of the Lord, then nothing can stand against us. Even when we see things come at us, even when we see, maybe it may appear that things are crumbling in our life, when we are resting in the presence of the Lord, then things are happening. The unseen, the heavens are opening up, whether we see it or not. It's the unseen that's happening. These, these unseen movements happening within us, these unseen things happening around us, that's where it's at. There is power in the presence of the Lord. I'm choosing to rest in the presence of the Lord so that I can be moved by his presence, so that I can be moved by his spirit into freedom, into into these walls crumbling, into these walls falling, that nothing can stand against his presence. And I'm choosing to remain there. I, I would be crazy. I would be crazy to try to live my life anywhere other than the presence of God. It is the most beautiful, most powerful place ever, hands down, ever. And in his presence, everything is found. All of that power, all of that love, all of that peace, all of that real life. That's where it's at. The presence of the Lord. I love that chapter. I pray that the Lord just moved things up within you and you reminded that in his presence, because of his presence, things are moving constantly. Let, let him move within you. Let him quiet you, still you, still your, your thoughts, your, your emotions, still you physically, just still everything in you mentally. Keep everything silent so that what's within us, that there can be movement within us, that we give his spirit, give his presence freedom to move within us so that while we're quiet, while we're just resting in who he is, that there is movement within and that our souls can truly erupt with praise. That that authentic way of praising, authentic way of living can be so glorifying to our God. May it be all in his presence and all for his glory. So good. Uh, man, just linger on that. Linger on that chapter and let him just keep rolling more and more truth, more and more power into you. So good. Ending with that. Um, so, so good. Thanks so much for walking this out with me. Thank you for just listening and, and just choosing to hear the Lord speak and being disciplined and continuing to pursue him and diving in deeper and deeper into his word and allowing his word, allowing his heart, who he is, his presence to change us, to do things within us so that our life can be lived naturally and, and powerfully and just full of life. So good. Thanks for walking this out with me. Continue to grow with me. Let's keep walking this incredible journey out of just discovering more and more of who God is and hitting chapter by chapter, running through the entire word of God, choosing to rest in his presence. So good. That, that's it. That's, that's it. That's all I got. Uh, okay. Ending there. Hope to see you soon on my next video. Let's keep doing this together. All glory to him. See ya.